Okay, we're going to be on verse 10 of chapter 5. Blessed are they which are persecuted for the righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now 10 and 11, they go together. These, now these verses, these verses right here, these, especially these two, Teachers and preachers, you don't hear too much preaching or teaching on this, that we're going to be persecuted and we're going to be despised. That doesn't bring in a good love offering when the preacher's preaching on that. So, but it's in here, it's in the Beatitudes, so I got to teach on it. It is the Word of God. And I like to be like Paul. Paul says in Acts 20, verse 27. He says, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. And that's talking about all the scriptures. We don't leave any scriptures out. At least men of God shouldn't leave any scriptures out because like this one, we're going to be prosecuted and we're going to be despised by others. You know, they, that's not a good sermon. But it's in the Word of God. We need, to, we need men who, who will preach the whole counsel of God. More preachers to teach this, to preach on this. But like I said, uh, there's a f couple of reasons why they don't. There's one is it's not a popular teaching or preaching. Uh, it affects the love offering, believe it or not. They don't want to lose members. And plus, you can't become a popular preacher when you're preaching stuff like this. And believe it or not, there's men out there who are preachers where that's their goal, is to be well-known. This is the last beatitude, these two. They're really, like I said, they're really one. It's about being persecuted and being despised, being revolved. And that's why Jesus says right here, you get a double blessing. It's, it's, it, the both of them are really one, but he said blessed twice in here. So when we're persecuted, I see right here the Lord's going to be doubly blessed us for, for going through persecution. And then this follows blessed or the peacemakers. Because this is what's going to happen when you're a peacemaker, when you're out there witnessing, this is what's going to happen. When you're out there in a dark world and we're letting our light shine, it's going to come on you. It's going Because who doesn't want you to witness? Satan. Satan doesn't. So he's going to attack you. And remember what I said in Ephesians. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against the spirit world. So when we're out there trying to win people to the Lord, you better believe the devil's going to attack you. <clears throat> When we suffer because of righteousness' sake, it's because we're doing verse 6 where it says we hunger and thirst for righteousness. If you hunger and thirst for righteousness, that means you're walking with the Lord. And it says we suffer for that. We suffer for being hungry and thirsty. As long as people don't know you, you're a Christian, you're not hurting anyone. Well, you're hurting them, but Satan's not going to bother you. You're not, you're not messing up his plan to take as many people as he can with him when, to hell when he goes. So as long as you're not being that Christian, don't expect too much temptation from the devil. Because as long as you're not doing the work of the Lord, why is, why is he going to tempt you with anything? Because you're not bothering him. You know, we as Christians, we as Christians, the devil, really seriously, the devil should be scared of us. Because we have God in us. In us. So when he's out there doing his work and we come along, he's not going to like it. But if he's out there doing his work and you're right there in the middle of it and you're not affecting him, what he's doing, he don't have no reason to bother you. So as we grow in the Lord and get closer, more temptations are going to come our way. But that's okay because if we're growing, we can still handle them. Well, there was one time where I... Uh, I was, like I said before, I used to go to the jailhouse. I used to go to the mall, to the ho uh, hospitals, and I was doing a lot of witnessing, and, and stuff was really coming on me. And it was starting to get to me, and I was like, I really thought about stopping. But the Lord spoke to me. He spoke to me. And I said, I'm sorry, Lord, that even came to my mind, that because of Satan and his, him attacking me, I was almost letting that stop me from doing the Lord's work. But praise God, he put me through it and I didn't stop. But I almost did. 
just because of those temptations, the attacks he was throwing at me. So if you're going to walk with the Lord, you better walk with the Lord with a strong spirit. You have a strong spirit, but you better learn how to use it because he will attack. If you're out there with just play machine guns, he's going to hurt you. you got to go out there with the word of God, the sword. Now look at Cain and Abel. Abel didn't preach to Cain. But because Abel lived for the Lord, because he, he did what was righteous for God, look what Cain did. He killed him. So there's going to, I mean, this is the severity in, 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 in some places. You can be killed for doing the work of God. Just like uh, Abel and Cain. Abel was killed because he was doing the work of the Lord. He was following the Lord. If we're suffering, it's because we're obeying. We're obeying the seven Beatitudes we just did. It's because we're obeying all of them. That's when we're going to have suffering. Then we're pleasing the Lord when we do them also. We're not pleasing the world and we're not pleasing the devil when we follow the Beatitudes that, we're learn- that we've been learning. So if you want to please the Lord, walk in the Beatitudes. Walk in the Beatitudes. God's people are rejected people. If you're a born-again Christian, then you're rejected here on earth. You're going to be a person who's rejected. Just like Jesus, for being the Son of God, will be, will be treated, treated the same way because the world hated Jesus. And like I said before, because the world hated Jesus, the world's going to hate us. If we're being Christians. And what's Christian? Christian is Christ-like. So if you're walking like the Lord, the world's going to hate you. In fact, uh, verses... In uh, John fifteen twenty three, he that hateth me hateth my father also. John fifteen eighteen, if the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. That's what Jesus was saying. John fifteen nineteen, if you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hated you. So the Lord says, hey, we're not of this world no more. Remember, this world, when the Lord says world, what he's saying, when he says world, he's saying lost people. That's what world world means, lost people, when he talks about the world. They hated us partly because we were one of them, and then we switched teams. You know, when we were lost, we belonged to the world. Because we switched teams now, and we're on the Lord's team, they hate us. You know, it's not us against the world. It's the world against the Lord. That's what it is. Being persecuted and despised, the Lord has told us over and over in the the scriptures, that's what's going to happen to us. Because of these verses, there's no way, and I said this before, there's no way we are going to be popular in the world. I have a hard time believing someone is a born-again Christian when they're popular in the world. I have a hard time believing that. Because, I mean, if this person is a Christian who is supposed to be living in the light, how can she be popular in darkness? I just can't. I don't see how that goes together. So there's people out there who are popular in the world, but they're called Christians. And other people believe believe they're Christians because they might talk about the Lord a, a little bit or maybe even sing a song about the Lord. But, you know, that doesn't make you a Christian. If you walk with the Lord, you can't be accepted by the darkness. And that's what the world is, darkness. And I've told you about Robert Schuller before. He's a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's, you listen to him and all his sermons are positive thinking. It's positive thinking. There's nowhere... You can listen to him, his, his whole sermon, and you won't hear him talking about Jesus. I mean, you know, the, the well, like we preach and teach here, you won't hear him. You see, this man is a pretty, pretty popular preacher. He's pretty popular, but he's popular in the world. Where Jesus exposes sins, Schuller doesn't. He doesn't. He, like our pastor is talking about hell, preaching on hell right now. He's not going to do this. That's no, negative. Uh, yeah, that's negative. <laughs> that's negative thinking when we when you hear that kind of preaching. So he's not going to preach to anybody about hell. <laughs> Jesus did that all through the Bible. Like I said, you can listen to them month after month after month, and you won't know anything about being born again. So, like I said, being popular, if you want to be popular, this ain't the place for you. This ain't the place for you. 
You want to be popular by the world, then you're going to have to live like the world. If you don't want to be prosecuted, you want the world to accept you, then you got to go out there and please them. This is what ha- this is what happens when when you're preaching the word of God. Paul said is in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 10 through 14. But you Timothy certainly know what I teach and how I live and what my purpose in life is. You know my faith, my patience, my love and my endurance. This is what a Christian is. This is what a Christian has. A Christian knows his purpose in life. We after after learning what blessed are the peacemakers now we know what our purpose in life is because he said everyone anybody who's a born again Christian has the ministry of reconciliation and not just for certain people all born of Christians that's one thing for sure we all have in common we have that same ministry so we we can't say I don't know what my ministry is I don't know why the Lord has me here well I told you last week or whenever that was Every one of us have the ministry of reconciliation. So now we know what our purpose is here. And then in verse 11, you know how much persecution and suffering I have endured. You know all about how I was persecuted in Anak, Iconium, Lastra. I pronounced these, I don't know. But you, you got them in your verses right there. But the Lord rescued me from all of it. Paul was practically... Paul was practically stoned to death and the Lord brought him back to life. In Acts 14, 19 it says, And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul threw him out of the city supposing he had been dead. So they just about stoned Paul to death. Now there's some, there's some believe that they did stone him to death and the Lord brought him back to life. Right here I'm getting that is supposedly he had been dead, like they thought he was dead. Well, like I said, there's some teachers who believe that th- that he, they did kill him, and the Lord brought him back to life. Which, either way, the man was stoned practically to death or to death. It's almost there's not too much difference, but the Lord brought him back. And in verse 12, yes, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Did that leave any of us out in here? All of us. If, if you want to live a godly life. We got to read every word in every verse. So the Lord is saying right here, everyone who's living a godly life will, will suffer persecution. These preachers who preach nothing but prosperity, they must not be living a godly life. Not reading the scriptures, that's for sure. I mean, these preachers who say nothing but uh, you should have this and you should have that. If you're walking with the Lord, just pray for it and you can have it. Oh boy, people need to read the Bible. If they read where it's in places where it says, ask and you shall receive, if you read those verses that they use, if you ask, if you read it, the whole chapter, one, one of the chapters, and there's many of them, but one of them, I can tell you, it's talking about wisdom and knowledge. That's what the chapter is talking about. And then that verse is in there. Well, that's what the Lord is saying, ask and you shall receive talking about wisdom and knowledge and then there's other places where it's talking about something else but never did the Lord say hey you want to be rich just ask for it but that's what they preach and people believe that verse 13 but evil people evil people and imposters will flourish in fact it says it right here evil people and imposters will flourish they will deceive others and will themselves be deceived the Lord is saying it's going to get worse Verse 14, but you must refrain, remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. Even though things are going to get worse, the Lord says, stay with what you've been taught. Stay with what's brought you to be a Christian and what you've been taught. The Beatitudes are a very good place to start. We've been, we've been on the Beatitudes and that's a good teaching. That's a good teaching. You know that the things you've been taught are true, he said. They're true. Because the ones who taught them to you used the, the, the scriptures to. Now, it's hard for people to come up to me and say, that's your opinion. 
Now, you see how many pages of nothing but verses I give y'all to explain one verse, to teach one verse. How many scriptures I've given you to teach one verse? I've been only teaching one verse every time. And on that one verse, I give you pages of nothing but scriptures. Now, that's kind of hard for someone to come up to me and say, well, that's what you think. When I'm just using nothing but scriptures to explain that one verse. Now, if I say blessed or whatever, and then I just go on for an hour, and I never use any verses again, you know, well, then maybe you can think that. But I use a lot of verses to explain the verses. I, and that's when you know you're under a, a teacher who, who studies. Now, I'm not saying that for me. I'm just telling you, if you, if you know if you're under a good teacher when he uses a lot of scriptures. When he uses the scriptures to back the scriptures. That's when you know you have a good teacher, and that's when you know what he's telling you is true. The Word of God. This has been happening since the beginning of the time. Like I, like I said before, men who walk with the Lord have been suffering. First John 3.12, which I told you about Cain and Apple. Cain, who was the wicked one, slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil, and his brother's was righteous. So here we have a brother who is walking a righteous walk with the Lord and was killed. And that's the verse I got that from. 1 John 3.12. Or you just read it in the Old Testament. Also, Joseph and his 12 brothers, his, his brothers despised him. And what they do to him? They sold him to, uh, into slavery. And Why? Because jo uh, cause Joseph obeyed his father. He was right with his father. So being right with his father, what he ended up, I mean, look what happened to him. But then later, the Lord rewarded him. Because he took it. He took it. He went through it. But later on, he was rewarded. Another one was Daniel. Because of his righteousness, he was thrown in the lion's den. The king said, 30 days. 30 days, go 30 days without worshiping the God. And Daniel could have said very easily, 30 days, you know, I can do that. 30 is just 30 days. But then what are we doing when we do that? We're compromising with whoever says, oh, just, we're compromising. Uh, okay. And again, that's the devil saying, hey, it's just 30 days. Well, guess what? You put the Word of God uh, aside for 30 days, What's going to happen to you? You're going to be a weak Christian. And when you're a weak Christian, what happens? You're definitely going to stumble. And that's all the devil wants. If he's got you just to get away from the Lord just for a little while. 30 days right here with Daniel. But if he can get you away from the Lord just for a little while, you're going to stumble. And that's when he wants you. This is the devil's plan, is to separate us from God. Another one is Stephen's in Acts 7. He was stoned to death. For preaching the word of God. Now I'm showing you verses that are men who have died. Who were killed for preaching the word of the Lord. Now we don't have to, we don't have to worry about that. Not, not yet anyway. Not yet. This country is getting further and further and further away from the Lord. So I don't know what's going to be in the future. Hopefully the rapture will come before that happens. But right now we don't have to worry about that. You can go out there on the streets and, and preach on the corner. And nobody's going to do any, anything. They'll play, just ignore you, but you, you can't be killed for it. Can't even be arrested for it. These men were, were stoned. And then when they did listen, like Daniel, when he did listen to the Lord, and he, and he, he didn't put the Lord for aside for 30 days. He was thrown into the lion's den. What happened? The Lord took care of him. The Lord took care of him. And there's going to be verses that I'm going to read to you. Don't be afraid to be prosecuted. Jesus went into the synagogue to teach the religious leaders. And in Matthew 13, 57, it says, And they were offended in him. Talking about the religious leaders. They were offended in him. In him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Here the meaning prophet. The, right here, the meaning of prophet is someone is a man who either explains or interprets the word of God. So it's kind of like a preacher. Uh, he's out there proclaiming the word of God. And the Lord's saying right here, 
They're not even welcome where they live. They're not even welcome where they live. That's what the verse said right here. In his own country, in his own house. When you're preaching the truth, the word of God, there's going to be times where you're not even welcome in your own home. When we witness to people to tell them, when we witness to people to tell them about the Lord, I don't know too many people who say there's a cause for following the Lord. You know, when you witness to somebody, I mean, do we, do we tell them these two verses? Oh, by the way, if you do give your life to the Lord, the world's going to hate you. The world's going to despise you. Do we tell them that? We don't tell them that. We tell them the good side, you know, we, you, you can go to heaven to accept the Lord. But a lot of times we need to tell them, hey, what is expected? And I want, I want people to get saved. Don't, you know, I want people to get saved. But also make sure they know what they're getting into. So when they do get in it and something happens, they weren't expecting that. Well, I, I put this in the same boat with young kids who walked out and get baptized. Like my daughter. She was, uh, I think, 13 years old, I think. Something like that. Okay, she was younger. She's got better memory than me, okay? Well, she was younger, and she said, Dad, I, you know, she goes to another church, and she said she was going to get baptized. And I thought, I said, well, that's good. And But that was all I said. And she told, she even said, well, you don't seem too excited. And I thought, I said, darling, when you get old enough and you're out there in the world and you still want to live for the Lord, then I know you're born again. Because you haven't been tempted the way the devil can tempt you. As kids, you don't know what temptation is. When you grow up and you find out what, how the world is and you don't want to be a part of it, then I can say, okay, you're truly born again. So I, I'm not a person who gets too excited when I see little kids getting up there and getting baptized. You might think that's bad of me, but I don't because of that reason. They have not been tempted. They have not been in the world to be tempted to where they can say, I still want to live for the Lord. Even though they got this smoking, they got this drugs, they got these women, guys, alcohol. No, I don't want none of that. I want to live for the Lord. Okay. Now you've been tempted with that, and if they can still say, I want to live for the Lord, then I can say, Amen. But until then, that's the way I look at it. I could be wrong. I'm not perfect on everything I think about, you know, but that's the way I look at it. In First Thessalonians chapter three, verses three and four, that no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. Again, right here, the Lord says, "For yourselves know that we are appointed. We're appointed to go through this." Verse four: For verily, when we were with you, we told you before. That's why I'm saying, do we tell people when we're witnessing to them? what to expect but right here it says for verily when we were with you we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass and you know so I, I truly believe we need to let people know okay if you want to be a Christian it's not just hey you're going to heaven no you, they have to know what they're going to go through here on earth in this world as being a Christian in Luke fourteen twenty eight, for which of you Intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it. Before you become a Christian, you need to sit down and say, oh, okay, he told me I was this, 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 and that. Then are you, then are you ready? Are you ready to count the cost for what it's going to be to, to be a Christian? I hope you all understand what I'm saying. It's not just the bed of roses. When you walk... Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just talking about for when, when you're witnessing, it's not just, you know, love the Lord and get born again. You know, believe this and get born again. Uh, like these verses I just showed you. Uh, did we tell them before in verse four? In verse four, did we tell them before that they were going to suffer persecution? Before what? Before they accept it. And then this one right here. They got to sit down and, and or whatever you told them, and we should tell them all of it. You know, like I said, I love for people to get saved. I love it, but I got to make sure they know the whole, the whole. The, they get the whole picture. Now, if you do become born again, the world's going to hate you. 
They might not want to be hated by the Lord. Once they get out there and they see the world doesn't like them anymore, they might just, nah, this ain't for me. You know what I'm saying? That's why we need, these verses right here shows you, we need to show them. Not just give them the pretty part of it, but there's also, but at the same time, we're Christians, we're sons of God, and the Lord's going to be with us. Not only saying, hey, you're going to suffer persecution, but also tell them what's going to happen when you do. The Lord will rescue you out of that. He will be with you. And not only that, you're going to be re rewarded for going through all this. So when, it, when you're witnessing to somebody, it's not something that's going to take five or ten minutes. When you're witnessing to someone, you better have some time. Because there's a whole lot more to witnessing than just saying, you know, believe in God, that He resurrected, and He's in heaven. There's a whole lot more to witnessing and getting someone saved than this, just that. In First Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 19. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fury trials, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. It says it shouldn't surprise us when these things happen to us. Verse 13, But rejoice, inasmuch as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. He says to be happy with great joy when you suffer persecution. That's what he says to do. And we can. We can because who suffered the most than anyone? Christ. Jesus. He's the one that suffered. So we're in, great, we're in great company. If we're suffering like Jesus did, we're with our Lord. We're just like our Lord. When we'll be with Him, He reveals Himself to the world. When we're living... As Christians, when we're living as Christians, we reveal who Jesus is to the world. And that's when our suffering that we endure will be rewarded. And when we're rewarded, he says we're going to have exceeding, exceeding joy. That's what he says. The joy we've experienced from the Lord now while we're here, he's blessed us. He's blessed us while we're here. But right here, exceeding joy... That exceeding joy is when we, at the end, go to be with Him. There's not going to be exceeding joy. I guess that's the only words man could find. But when we're with the Lord, I mean, forever with the Lord, that's, that's a joy I can't even explain. I mean, we get blessings here when we go through them, but our final greatest blessing we're going to get is living with the Lord forever, with Him. It can't be compared in verse 14, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. For ye, the spirit of, of glory and of God rests upon you. And their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. If people are think, talking bad about you, insulting you because you're a Christian, the Lord says be happy. Can you see why he says your ways is not my ways? I mean, here we are being insulted even maybe even curse that for being Christian. And he says, be happy. So our ways and our ways, the way we think, is not the same as the Lord's. And First John 4, 4, it says, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. When you're going through this, you got to remember who's in you. That's one thing, uh, like I said before, Christians, we have a short memory. We forget that God is in us. Almighty God, the creator of heaven and earth, is in us. Is in us. Now how much more power can you have than that? You got everything you need to go through anything here on earth. We got all the power that God has, we have. Because He lives in us. He's given us everything we need to go through whatever comes our way. Whatever comes our way. God is glorified, it says. When we're cursed and insulted, and we don't respond in the flesh, if we don't respond in the flesh, don't get out there and someone's insulting you, and then you start insulting them back. You're getting down on their level. The Lord, He is glorified when we, when we do not respond in the flesh. Because what did Jesus do? Did He respond in the flesh? What did He do when they spit it on Him? When they he cursed Him? When they cursed him, insulted him, he never said a word. It's almost like, man, 
It's hard to be a Christian when you hear stuff like this, but it's not. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's not. And the reason I say it's not is because I've been through a lot of stuff that I should have gotten in the flesh. I should have reacted the way the flesh wanted to react, but I didn't. I didn't. And it wasn't because of me. It was the spirit that was in me that stopped me. Now, I could have ignored the spirit, and I could have done what I wanted to do. But when we respond in the flesh, we're not glorifying the Lord. We have to remember that. Remember, I can't say that enough. Remember who lives in you. Remember what power you have. Man, if you really can take that in, comprehend what power you have in you, ooh, you'll be saying, I'm ready, come on. You'll be saying, come on. throw it at me. Don't ask for it, though. It's like people who pray for patience. Uh, you know, I don't know if I want to pray for patience. If it comes that way, then, you know, okay. But uh, pray for it, I don't know. Verse 15. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Now this verse, it says, if you, it says but let none of you suffer for all this. But many of us will suffer for this. We have done at least one of these. Every one of us in here has done at least one of these. If you think if someone's done something to you, and not all of us have, but I'm sure some of us have thought, I wish he was dead. And what the Lord said? If you even think it, it's like doing it. The Lord says in Malachi 3.8, he says, right here it says, thief, you know, none of us in here are going to say we're thieves. But Malachi 3.8 says, will a man rob me? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. That's being a thief. You have robbed God. Now, I don't know who tithes in here and who doesn't, but if you're not a tither, you, your category is right here. You're robbing from God. You're a thief. Now, some of this stuff might sound harsh, but it is the Word of God. He said, you have robbed me. And if you've robbed him, it makes you a thief. You can say you never did anything wrong. Who, who, who can say they've never done anything wrong? Evil doers. All of us in here have done something wrong. We were sinners. We're still sinners, but we were lost. And some of us in here can't say I've never gotten in other people's business. That's what a busybody is. Someone who gets in other people's business. So all of us, all of us in here are guilty of at least one of these. So we suffer for it, then we deserve it. Verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. It's not a shame to suffer for being a Christian. Praise God for the privilege of being called a Christian. If we're being prosecuted and we're suffering because we're, we're Christians, well, praise God. That's the way we need to look at it. Praise God. Because Christian means we're sons of God. Christian says, we, our Father, is the Lord. In verse 17, For the time has come that judgment must become, begin at the house of God, and if it is first begins at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? It begins with us first. First Corinthians 11.32, it says, But when we are judged, we are chastised of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. We're not going to be condemned with the world. We have our judgment now when we are saved. Our judgment, like I said before, our judgment is now. As soon as you get born again, when you give your life to the Lord, that's our judgment. The Lord has just justified us to be right with Him. But those who do not accept the Lord, what a terrible judgment waits for them. So first it's just going to start with us. Judgment is going to start with us. And then the world, the world is coming at the great white throne judgment. That's when theirs is coming. And verse 18. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? If any of us, if any of us in here have pride, because we think, look at me, I'm a Christian. That's pride. We shouldn't we should go around 
I'm somebody because I'm a Christian. Well, we're somebody. We're sons of God, but we, but pride does not belong in a Christian's life. In fact, get rid of it. Why? Because right here it says, if the righteous scarcely be saved. That's us. We're barely making it in there. So there's no pride in saying, oh, look at me. There's no pride in that. We're just barely making it. That's what the scripture says, right? If the righteous scarcely be saved. Verse 19, Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto faithful Creator. And the way I can explain this is in Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, He said, Father, into Thy hands I commit my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. So this is what we're doing. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him. Just like Jesus gave up his, his, his spirit to the Lord, that's what we've done. We've given, up, we've given up our souls to the Lord. In Luke chapter 6, verse 26 and 20, through 28, it says, Woe. You know that word, woe? When it says, woe, you better read this because this is, this is something we should listen to. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For, for so did the fathers do, do to the false prophets. It's hard to read the King James. <laughs> but anyway, uh, what it's saying is, what sorrow awaits you when, you when you're praised by the crowd? We have a perfect example of the Pope. He is praised by the crowd. He's not only praised, he's worshipped by the crowd. Mm-hmm. And right here it says, Woe. Woe unto anyone who does that. Where people are worshipping you. I mean, even the angels said, No, don't worship us. Paul, Peter, I mean, men of God said, No, don't worship us. Even the angels. But right here it says, Men, if you allow this, woe unto you. I wouldn't want no woe unto me. That's the wrath of God. I don't want the wrath of God on me. Verse 27, But I say unto you which hear, Love your enemies and do good to them which hate you. Again, it says, The world's going to hate us, but, we love, but we're to love them. We're to, even though they hate us, we're to love them. Verse 28, Bless them that are curse you, and pray for them which despisefully use you. If they don't turn from the Lord when you're praying for them, he says, like in, in Romans 12, 19, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. So those who curse you, those who despisefully, the Lord says, Vengeance is mine. Now even though the Lord says this, this is not something we should be thinking. Well, I can't wait till the Lord gets a hold of you. We shouldn't be thinking that way. We're to love them. But the Lord will have His day with those who do who do, do that. Now I've given you this verse before, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. But right here, you know, he says it. There is no temptation that is going to come on you. So if you're being persecuted, if you're suffering for the Lord, the Lord says, hey, I'm not going to give you more than what you can handle. He says it right here. Be tempted above what you, what you are able. And I, I've, I've used this verse before with y'all, but I wanted to use it again because it's true. If it comes your way, if it comes your way, the Lord knows. Your Father knows you can handle it. He knows you can. 2 Corinthians 12.10 Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So what he's saying here, when we're weak, He is strong. He's made us strong. Like I said, the Holy Spirit in you. So all this, this suffering and persecution we've been talking about, people despising us, the Lord said be happy. The Lord said be happy. Why? 
because we belong to Him. If we didn't, if we didn't belong to Him, then we wouldn't have to worry about none of this. If you're walking in the light, if you're walking in the light, like I said, these things are going to happen. The Lord said, expect it. Uh, those of us who maybe didn't know this before coming in here tonight about suffering and being despised by the world, we know it now, but praise God, that shouldn't be nothing for us. Who do, who do we want to be accepted by? The world? By the world or by the Lord? So I, who cares what the, what the world's going to say about us? Who? We shouldn't. They're so far off. We, I mean, it's like, so what? I don't care what you think. I'm here to please my Lord. Period. That's it. That's why I'm here is to please Him. If you think I'm an idiot, go ahead. I don't care. If you think I'm a holy roly or whatever expressions they use now, I know it used to be holy roly, but I don't know what they say now. But I would say thank you. Huh? That's what I would say. Well, thank you. Thank you for seeing that the light is in me. Amen. Psalms thirty four nineteen. Many are many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, the Lord delivereth him out of all of them. So is there anything that's going to come on us that the Lord can't deliver us from? Praise God for the scriptures. Praise God he puts verses like this in here. Because I believe every single verse in the Bible. And when I read something like this, I believe it. I'm going to believe it. It's the word of God. I, when I gave my life to the Lord, I, I had made up my mind. I'm going to believe what's in the Bible. I don't care what man says. I'm going to believe this. If they go with this, amen. I listen to them. If they're going to get uh, what they say doesn't go with the Bible, then I'm following this. Okay. If a man, if we get a preacher, if Brother Joe ever leaves and we get a preacher and and he's he doesn't fit with this, I'm out of here. I'm gone. I'm not going to send in a man who who has another gospel. But praise God, we do have a preacher that preaches the Word of God, and we're blessed here. We are very blessed. Believe the Word of God. Believe everything that's in here. Because it's all true. I mean, that's the only way you're going to make it. The Lord says the name is 3-3. Three, three. How can two walk together unless they be in agreement? Mm -hmm. If there's some things in here you're not in agreement with, how can you walk with the Lord? Right. I mean, Amos plainly says it. How can you walk, or how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? So I've made that, um, my goal in life is to believe every single thing in the Bible. And when I read verses like this, there's a whole lot of verses that are blessings to me. A whole, even when they say I'm going to suffer, I believe it or not, that's a blessing. Because I know I'm walking with the Lord. Only those who walk with the Lord are going to be suffering, being prosecuted by the, by the world. So if you're being prosecuted by the world, amen. I'm serious, Amen. Because that tells you, that should show you, hey, I must be walking with the Lord. I'm serious. My light must be shining. That's a amen. Now next Wednesday, when I come in here, I might have to put something down there. Because next Wednesday, I'm a holler. It's the finale and I'm going to go crazy, okay? <laughs> I was just joking. I was <laughs> I don't know. If the Spirit does it, I'll do it. <laughs> but next, like I said, next week, it should be the last week. Believe the Scriptures. The Lord delivereth him out of them all. Believe it. If you're, so whatever, if you're suffering for whatever, put your eyes on the Lord, and He will deliver you from it. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. Many, many of us fight witnessing to people. Many of us do. We do. When that, when we, when this church, and let me say this, when this church overcomes that, that water in there, that baptismal in there, it's going to be used a lot. When we, the members of this church, start quit, uh, stop listening to the devil and go out there and witness, we're going to. What did I say in Ephesians six? We're attacked by the spiritual powers. When we quit listening to the devil and we start being become peacemakers, we're going to see those wars stirred a whole lot more than what they're being stirred now. A whole lot more. Yeah, because the preacher can't. Do, I mean, he's got to go visit the sick. He's got, you know. Well, the preacher shouldn't even be doing that. The only thing our preacher should be doing is studying the Word of God. 
Because his ministry is to feed us. Where he's the shepherd, we're the sheep. His ministry is to feed us. Yeah, that's the thing. He's got all now he's got deacons who do, you know, to do the visiting. And then he's got us, us the members. If this church is not growing, it's not because of the pastor. It's because of us. Because we're not out there doing the ministry of reconciliation. We're not being peacemakers. I put it all on us. We, if our church is not growing, we, have, we sure don't blame the pastor. And we don't have no one to blame but ourselves. So we need to get away from this listening to the devil. And, I mean, the devil, like I said before, the devil's going to give you all kinds of reasons not to witness. We've got to quit listening to him. And we are listening to him. Until those waters start stirring like they should be, this church is listening to him. Because if you take all of us, at least, at least, and this is low end, every Sunday at least one person should be getting baptized. At least. I read you in Acts. They were getting saved daily. The book of Acts says they were getting saved daily. Because daily they were in the Word. They weren't in the Word just Wednesday and Sunday. It says daily they were in the Word, searching the Scriptures. And when they did that, people were getting saved daily. Amen? We need to get back to the old church. Seriously. We need to, we need to go out there and witness. We need to go out there and witness. It's, it's us. We're the ones. This church is our church. And if we wanted to grow, if we wanted, and I, we're not talking about numbers. We're talking about getting so, people saved in here. We're not looking for a number like, you know, let's see if we can get 100 people saved. Numbers, you know, I don't ever look at numbers. What should, the only thing that should be in our mind is just getting people saved. But do y'all do know what I'm, where I'm coming from on that? If, it's, if we're not growing, it's the church's fault. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, biblically, our pastor is to stay in this, the Word of God, because we're depending on Him to feed us the Word. We depend on Him to feed us. But just like the Lord called Him to be a pastor, He's called us to be peacemakers. Don't forget that. Well, He's not doing His job. Well, you better ask yourself, are you doing yours? Daniel 3.17 If it be so... Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. So I'm just showing you right here again. The Lord will deliver us, just like he did Daniel, just like he did Joseph. Stephen was killed. A lot of prophets were beheaded. I don't know what he has for me. I don't know what this country is coming to, but I would pray. I'm not going to be like Peter and say I'll never do that. But I would pray that even if it did come that way down here, I would die. I would die preaching the gospel of Christ. I pray that well, I would go that far. Romans eight eighteen, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Any suffering I did for the Lord now, that's a small price for what's waiting on me. You hear me? That's, that's a small price for us to pay for what's waiting on us. And what's waiting on us? A mansion. He's going, I'll go and prepare a place for you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. That was, ooh, come on. <laughs> when God says, I'm going to prepare a place for you, I'm still thinking about going to a Pentecostal church because I, I got to I gotta go crazy sometimes because it's going to. Is, I'm going I'm to explode one day. Oh, <laughs> one day I'm going to just explode. We shouldn't try to hide or escape from this world. Because he tells in, in John 17, verse 14 through 18, I have given them thy word. He's talking about us. And the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth, and thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I am also sent them into the world. God sent Jesus. Jesus is sending us. That's why he came. That's why he has his disciples. He, those, those were teachers. His teachers put out the words. And made teachers out of other men, and then so on, and so on, and so on. 
And there's a lot of Christians who have followed this. And this why, that is why this book is still, I believe, the most popular book ever sold. We need to carry it on. We need to carry it on. I don't want it to stop in my generation that the gospel wasn't preached anymore. I'm talking about, about us, not by preachers, by us. Because we are, everyone in here who is born again is a preacher. We, our preaching is out there. My church, I come here to, to learn, to make it fed. I don't come over here to get saved because I'm already there. Church is a group of believers, so I come here to get fed. And why am I getting fed? Just to get fat right here? No, I ain't getting fed so I can go out there and spread it also. Give it to me so I can go out and spread it also. Just like you tell one person, this one person tells another person, and so on and so on, and it just grows. And that's why this is still here, because it has been growing. But I don't want this, I don't want this to be the generation where it stopped, because we got too lazy. And like I said, the world is going to get worse. It's going to get worse. So don't look, don't look for, like I said before, don't look for no great revival. The next great revival they're, they're going to have is the rapture. Is the, is the rapture and during the tribulation. Because many, many are going to get saved in the tribulation. That's going to be the next revival. Okay? So these preachers that say we need revival in the land, it's not going to happen. One more, one more verses and I'll stop for the night. In uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 28 and 32... People, when you're witness, out there witnessing, they're either going to love you or they're going to hate you. Mm-hmm. Now, I hate to say this, but there's going to be more that's going to hate you than love you. All right? But in Luke chapter 4, verse 38 and 32, this is Jesus. And all day in the synagogue, when they heard these things, this was Jesus preaching. When they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust them out of the city and led him onto the brow of the hill whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But pass, but he passing through them, the midst of them went his way. Now that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to kill him. He was preaching, I mean truth. I mean Jesus is truth. That's what he was doing. He was preaching truth, and they wanted to kill him. But then verse 31, And came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath day, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. So we will have some people who are going to be amazed at what we tell them. There's a lot of people out there that know nothing about Jesus. I knew nothing about Jesus until I was 25 years old. I knew nothing about him. You'll have some people who will love you, some. But then you're going to have people who are, who are going to want to kill you. Not physically kill you, but kill you by not, well, staying away from you. They don't want to be around you. Yeah. The darkness does not want to see the light. Get away from you. <laughs> but persecution, part of that persecution, I was working at Sherbon uh, as a temporary job, and I had to eat lunch by myself. I had to eat lunch because I'd read the Bible at my lunch break. Nobody else wanted to be around me. So, part, that's part of being persecuted. You ain't got no friends. The only friends you're going to have is at church or you have Christian friends out there that you might run around with. Do you, you hear what I'm saying? So, part of this persecution is not having, like, like that, a burden shipyard. When they used to work at burden shipyard, same thing. People don't want to eat with someone who's reading the Bible. Darkness does not want to get around the light. That's about the same way I had it at Freeway. They, uh, they didn't talk bad or anything about me. They they respected what I, you know what I believed and the way I lived, and, and but I did not. That's one thing I don't do. I don't ever hide that I'm a Christian. I don't ever hide it. Go somewhere and I let them know right away who I am. I do. I let them know right away. But th- that's and that's what we should do. We should just like the verses the scripture said out before. We should not be ashamed. Some people hide it. Some people had they, I don't know why, but they 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 do. I had a like they have a poster at work. Well, when we first started, when we first started having our church, I put a poster at work, pinned it up, 
you know, that I had church on certain time, certain place, you know, at our house. And uh, I put on there, uh, how do I put it? Something like, do you want to attend old-fashioned church? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> and then, anyway, I put that up. I'm not, I'm not ashamed of, of being who I am. And believe it or not, believe it or not, I hope none of us are, are in here are, but believe it or not, there are a lot of Christians who are. They won't say I'm ashamed, but the way they live, that's what they show. Did they make take that down? No. Oh, okay. No, they, they stayed up well, there. Well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, they, nobody say anything. Okay. Yeah. But just like they didn't say anything when I went around crossing out the X on Xmas. <laughs> I mean, even the supervisors didn't say nothing. Because they know they... I'm not boasting here, but I I love my God. I'm not ashamed of Him, and I stand up for Him. You know, I do that. So they really didn't want to attack me on that because I don't fear. If I stand up for the Lord and I lose my job, but I stood up for the Lord, God's going to have something else for me. That's the way I believe.